Hi, thanks for joining me today in my studio at Visual Philosophy. Today I want to talk about transferring images to encaustic painting. And this is a multi-step process, but it enables artists to uh, create imagery either using the computer or photographic imagery and put it on your paintings so you get kind of a nice contrast between the painterly aspect of the encaustic and the more uh, mechanical uh, aspect of a transfer. So let's get started. The first step is to use the proper materials. For doing this transfer, you really want um, a laser copy. And the difference between a laser print or a Xerox copy or a toner based print is that it uses the toner rather than ink. So there's two different types of printouts. There's the toner, which is also called a laser, a laser printer, or you could use um, an inkjet printer. And the inkjet actually prints out ink or dye onto the paper. But with the toner, it's actually a powdered plastic that gets laid down on the paper and then heat set. So it can be um, released from the paper onto different substrates. And we're gonna use um, the beeswax and caustic medium as our transferring substrate. So the first thing we wanna do once we have our either Xerox copy or laser print is to cut out the parts that we want to use. So I'm gonna to try to print, uh, transfer this whole image, but I don't need all this extraneous paper. So I'm just gonna cut out what I don't need. Because the only parts that are going to transfer are the black toner. So this really has to be um, you know, everything that's just paper is gonna get uh, removed during the process. So I've got my paper. If I wanted to, I could also layer or I could sort of collage. I could put one here and one here, but you really want the toner to come into contact with your substrate. And this process on encaustic works best when the encaustic surface is very smooth and there's no kind of dips or dents, bumps or lumps. So starting with a really smooth encaustic surface is important. The next step is it can't be really cold. In order for the toner to transfer and stick to the encaustic painting, you need to either have just fused it or in this case, because this has been sitting for a while, I'm going to use the torch to just lightly warm up the surface. Don't need to have a very high flame because I'm just gonna warm up the area where I want to transfer. And if there's any parts that need to be smoothed out at this point, you can do that with a higher flame. But I really just want to, I don't want it to be like liquid and molten. I really just want it to be warmed. If it's too hot and too melted, then your transfer will actually come out very blurry and you'll get a lot more paper residue than you want. So I don't want it to be shiny and liquidy, but I do want it to be warm. And now I'm going to transfer, place my image onto my encaustic painting and just smoothly start to burnish. Now you'll notice that I took the piece of paper and I put it face down and if you think about it, your image is gonna get mirrored on your encaustic painting. So if you have any writing, which I do in this case, you wanna make sure that it's mirror imaged before you put it down on your um, encaustic painting. Otherwise, 
it won't, uh, it'll read backwards. Right. So we're just gonna burnish and I'll go get a uh, spoon, like a, you can use a barren for printmaking or you can use a metal or wooden spoon and just start to burnish the paper that creates the contact that's gonna transfer that toner to the warmed and caustic medium. So we'll do that and then we'll wait till it cools because we don't want to start removing the paper until the toner has set into the encaustic. So for that reason, we will, once we're done burnishing, we'll set it aside and wait until it's cooled off again, and then we can start to wet the back and remove the paper. All right, so now that our encaustic painting has cooled, it's time to take our sponge and water and get rid of this paper so that all we see is the toner image and the clear uh, encaustic where the white of the paper used to be. And your sponge doesn't have to be super drippy, but you do want to saturate the back of your paper gently and as it gets saturated you'll see that it will start to sort of pill and you can start to rub either with the sponge or with your finger gently back and forth and remove those paper fibers so go slow and be gentle because if you are too aggressive and the toner hasn't completely stuck, then you're gonna pull it off uh, of your encaustic. So kind of like that. And if there's any dips in it, like um, irregularities in the surface, that might leave a void uh, as well. So if it's doing that a lot, just continue to wet the back and the paper will dissolve. So take your time with this. And just continue until all the paper has been removed. And you might see as it dries, there might be um, like a, a sort of a papery residue, like a matte finish. If you can get that off, that's okay. If you can't, then when we lightly fuse, um, that will melt into the uh, wax. So don't worry about that too much. So now you can see that most of the paper residue has been taken off. I'm just getting a little bit uh, of the residual paper uh, off. And this process works with the water because the encaustic is, um, repels the water, right? It's got the wax coating, so you can put as much water on it as you want, and it's not gonna hurt the surface. So you can either let it dry naturally, or you can get a paper towel or a rag, um, and then once the water has either evaporated or been dried, then we're going to just lightly fuse so that the toner melts into the wax. And by lightly fuse, I mean lightly fuse. You're just gonna wick it so that it just sets in. If you do too much, too high a temperature for too long, um, it'll start to actually move the image because it's just sitting on the surface. So this is a good, um, technique to do at the end, or if you're gonna put another layer of just like clear wax on top, then you wanna make sure that anything that you put over it is not gonna get super heavily fused or it will start to uh, break apart and move the image, unless that's what you want. All right, so I'm just gonna dry this. Very gently with a paper towel. And now that it's dry, you can see there's a little bit of some sort of milky paper uh, texture, but that's, like I said, all going to get 
just melt it down into plain plastic. So then we take our torch and make it go way down so that we can just barely see some of those areas with the paper will go from matte to shiny. And that's because they're just melting into the surface of the wax. But you wanna be very delicate with your torch work here. And that's it. Now successfully transferred a toner-based image onto an encaustic wax surface.